with, um, let's get into the practical part of, of using these arpeggio ideas. Um, I've been jamming over this little jam track. Um, um, I have jam tracks available for most of my uh, music. Uh, a lot of them are in the songbook, uh, the Niels Guitar Hits collection. Um, also transposed for sax and other instruments in another version. Um, yeah, so you have all the keys and uh, the books come with a CD with all the jam tracks but you can also download individual jam tracks on the website. Uh, and they're fun to play over and practice over this stuff. So this is what I'm using right here. Uh, this is a song called Last Night and um, this is from my uh, Ready to Play CD. And uh, I want to just demonstrate the use of these arpeggios that we talked about in the last lesson. Um, I bring up the chord chart here for you guys and uh, we're this section basically starts with A major uh, 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 and C sharp minor, it's just going back and forth. It's a very simple vamp um, and it ends, uh, it throws in an F sharp minor at the end. Um, uh, e over G sharp just before that so we basically it's a very diatonic little thing um, I'm not a big bebopper so most of my stuff stays very diatonic anything I show you here you can apply probably from anything from uh, contemporary jazz to uh, modern jazz or to blues rock and pop R&B um, it's apl applicable to everything any style there is um, but um, let's look at these options. Obviously, we talked about arpeggios, our breakdown chords. So on the A major 7, I can play an A major 7 arpeggio. On the C sharp minor, I can play a C sharp minor 7 arpeggio. Let's see uh, what that sounds like. If I just take these two chords... Well, let me just take... Actually, let's just take one chord at a time. I'm just taking this... Fits perfectly. And then on the C sharp minor, I would put the C sharp minor seven of him. But that is a little limited. <clears throat> the real value of a page is come into play when you use um, superimposition. And uh, a superimposition is when we take one chord and lay it overlay it over another. Uh, this works harmonically and melodically. So in other words, a chord I'm looking at is four notes, a four part harmony chord, minor seven, major seven chord, let's talk with our A major seven, root third, fifth, and seven, so A, C sharp, E, and G sharp. If I take the top three notes and build a new chord out of it, would be a C sharp minor, try it, add the fourth note, makes it an E sharp, uh, making it a C sharp minor seven, and uh, that extra note would be a B. I will reanalyze this against the A chord and it makes it basically an A minor nine chord, if I play both chords together. So if I play a C sharp minor seven chord over the A, I will create the sound of a A minor nine, a major nine chord. The same applies for the C sharp. If I play the chord build of the third, the first superimposition as I call it, uh, or the third on the C sharp would be an E, and the notes will end up to an E major, we'll make it an E major seven chord, um, adding a, a D sharp as the last note, we're creating a C minor nine sound. Um, it is important to think about what chords we can superimpose, and I will uh, out, uh, uh, lay this out in a graphic here. Uh, let me first demonstrate this before we go any further. Um, I'll put up my two chords. Thing this is you. 
So it sounds to me, it sounds actually nicer to play the one arpe uh, the arpeggio one step up. And you can take this concept even further. Uh, you can actually play the arpeggios of the fifth and it flips back to the first chord type. In other words, of a major seven chord, I can play a minor seven arpeggio of the third and a major seven of the fifth. On the minor seven, I can play a major seven of the third and a minor seven of the fifth. Um, again, I put this up as a graphic so you can see, um, um, so it doesn't sound too brainy here. Uh, I'm, I'm a visual guy and like to see things, so I hope that helps you guys too. <laughs> um, um, in other words, our options for A now got expanded from playing an A major 7 arpeggio to a C sharp minor to an E major 7 arpeggio. Um, and for the C sharp, we got the uh, G sharp minor 7 arpeggio, the E major 7, and the C sharp minor 7 arpeggio. So this, all of a sudden we got like uh, a whole bunch of different, uh, we got four different arpeggios we can play. We can actually take it up to the 7 as well. As the further we go up, the more jazzy, the more sophisticated this is going to sound like. Um, on the A, it's going to flip back to minor. It's going to be a G sharp minor 7 arpeggio that will work. And um, on, the, um, on the minor, we'll flip back to major. So it's going to be a B flat major 7 arpeggio. But there we're getting, we got a, we're getting very jazzy there. Uh, you might want to maybe use a different arpeggios. The problem with uh, uh, the the nice thing about minor major seven arpeggios are they're very slick. They're very un, uh, they don't sound like the chord. They're superimposed very easily. Um, you can obviously use a dominant seven arpeggio to superimpose to stay within a certain key, but the sound of a dominant chord is um, a, a seven like a G seven is so present that it will pull the ear away from the original chord. and a lot, uh, So that's a lot of times I stay away using those arpeggios. I do use minor 7 flat 5 or diminished arpeggios to play over dominant chords, which, which is the first uh, uh, superimposition. Um, on a G7 chord I'll use a um, B minor 7 flat 5 or if I wanted an altered chord a uh, B diminished chord. Those work very well. Um, in general, no matter what style of music you're using, the arpeggio of the third of the chord is going to work well for you. It will add a nine, and the nine is usually a, a note that's very pleasant to the ear, that's um, easily digested. Uh, it doesn't sound too far out there. And uh, um, so I'm going to play around a little bit and, and, and show you some of these. Um, sounds what we're getting with just going crisscross between the different arpeggios. <laughs> shouldn't construct the solo just using these techniques. I just did it to demonstrate some of the sonic possibilities. You might just use this in, a, in between two other lines that you play. Um, this is just one little trick. 
Uh, you should have many of those under your fingers. Just understanding the concept will help what you can use. And then you need to incorporate it into your regular ideas. Again, you don't want to sound like, uh, you know, when I played this, it sounded to me a little bit like an exercise until the end where I started getting off just using this one specific tool. Um, so be aware of that. Always think melody first and then throw in some of these things uh, just to create extra interest. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, check out the books, um, How to Make a Guitar Talk uh, and uh, the Neil Songbook or, or, or the other jam, jam tracks that I have on my website. You got the link right here. Um, and um, I'll see you in another installment. I'm probably going to do some online guitar clinics, so look out for that. Sign up for mailing list, neilsguitar.com. Um, and I'll keep you posted what's going on. Okay, you take care and uh, we'll see you around. Bye.